and hello YouTube, this is GS Man Smart, and I'm turning on a brand new video for Gaming with GS. And today we're here on Guild Wars, giving away free stuff, as you see. Home instance, free node farm, who wants to join in, huh? It's, this is, this is kind of what people do if they have a maxed out home instance. And well, I have a nearly maxed out home instance. Today I want to talk to you guys about that. And uh, just some of the things you can get. Note that this, this does not include some of the gem store stuff. We do have um, some gem store uh, upgrades in the home instance that you can get but I don't have a lot of those anyway and um, but I do have most of the in-game stuff so we're gonna take a look at that in just a minute I'm just waiting to see if we get one person in the party uh, so yeah this is something that you can do you can definitely check the LFG system you know every day and see if somebody's doing this I don't tend to do this often I saw someone do it uh, yesterday so I thought I'd do it today especially for this video and I don't think anyone else is coming, so let's go ahead and go inside my little lab. So basically, the home instance here, you can basically unlock a lot of these nodes here. With the recent spring update, we have the exalted chest, the cargo ship, uh, the cargo airship cargo, and the uh, supply cache here. You can actually buy these for only 250. They only cost 250 of the respective map tokens. So if you want to get these, they're fairly easy to get. And I actually, you do need to have the mastery for it. That's the only downside, you need to have the mastery for that. So if you go into your mastery section, you got to make sure you have in uh, Heart of Maguma, you got to have the Itso language to get the airship cargo. And then you got to have the exalted language to get the exalted chest. And you have to have the new hawk language to get the supply cache there. And once you have 250 of those, then you can get all three of these. So these are pretty easy to get. Um, if we go ahead and go up here, we have a crate obsolic, I think this is what it's called. This is merely here just for, the first time you get this, you get a hero point off of this. Um, but this, but every time after that, it's basically just serves as a, a point of power where you can merge together i think it's uh, 25 i think it's 25 or is it 20 25 or 20 i forget the exact number now but a certain amount of quartz crystals into a charged quartz crystal so you know how some of you always have to go to queensdale and then get the charged quartz crystal from there or whichever point of power you usually go to now you can just go to your home instance uh here we have the christmas tree which is only available if you've done the uh basically the, the christmas achievements during the christmas time you get it from a generous orphan gift, I think it is. And in the corner here, I thought I had a bandit chest. Oh, the, I think the, I think the bandit chest like spawns somewhere else every time. Every time it spawns somewhere different. So I guess we gotta find that one. Yesterday it spawned in that corner though. And uh, yeah, so I have a bandit chest here too. I don't know where it is right now, but we have that. Then over here we have the quartz crystal. Now some of these. The quartz crystal, for example, as well as the raw candy corn here, and as well as the sprocket one here, these you can actually buy with laurels and with gold, because these actually were from Living World Season 1, so if you weren't here at Living World Season 1, then you probably don't have these, and the candy corn is from Halloween, so you can actually buy a lot of these from the laurel vendor in the cities, if you talk to the laurel guy, he'll definitely sell some of these. And you can buy a lot of these just with laurels and with some gold. Then we continue down here. This one right here actually took a bit of time to get. The Aurelian uh, node. You have to complete the achievement. I think it's called the Mask Achievement. You go into Heart of Thorns here. Auric Basin. And I think it's No Mask Left Behind. Here it is. No Mask Left Behind. You gotta find all the masks. Very easy to do, uh, kind of fun to do as well. You explore the entire Arc Basin region. You can do this with a few friends one night, and you'll get the... Someone just sent me mail. We'll check that in just a bit. Um, so, yeah, this is how you get that one. So, also pretty easy to get. And then we have, I think our lost bandit chest is over here if I saw it. I didn't even know that this one actually spawns randomly. This is pretty neat that you have to, like, search your home instance. So, here's the lost bandit chest. Uh, this one you get from completing the story journal and from completing point of no return. 
This is from Living World Season 2. All you have to do is complete this episode and you get the home instance node here. It's also fairly easy to do, but if you don't have a Living World Season 2, obviously it kind of sucks because then you can't get it. That's the only downside. And that's pretty much all I have here. There is one other one you can get. There's one other node you can get, but it's really hard to get. I'm nowhere near to completing it. If you go to collections, rare collections here, and if you go to treasure hunter, which is right here, you can actually get a really cool one here, which is basically a chest you can open up every day. And it gives you some gear. It uh, gives you uh, Imperial Shards, it gives you, you know, you know how you open a jumping puzzle chest? It sort of gives you similar things like that. I really want to get this one, but quite honestly, a lot of this stuff is so expensive. Uh, for Especially, like, which one is it? One of these costs like 200, 300 gold in a trading post, unless you actually find it. I think it's, which one is it? This thing with, like, air seedling or something like that. Ah, oh, where is it now? It's like right here, I think. It's blue, too. Here it is, this one right here. This one costs like 200, 300 gold in the trading post, and it is ridiculous. So, this is going to take some time. If you go on the wiki, they do have a breakdown of where to find all these items. And I guess it, it's a nice little collection to do. Definitely a, a, a long-term goal to work at. I'm still working on it. I'm pretty much nowhere near to done. But that is the one other one that I don't have. There are some several other ones. If you go onto the Black Lion Trading Company, you'll actually see that you can actually buy some of the nodes if you type in node. But quite honestly, they are super expensive. Look at this. Uh, 100 gold, 200 gold, 300 gold. If you have gold to waste, uh, these are actually like some pretty good investments because every day you can just come back to your home instance and get free materials. So this is definitely something I may look into once I get richer. <laughs> but... um. Yeah, pretty neat. You can get some of these. There are some other ones that are really cool, like the leather rack that they recently just came out with. and allows you to gather some linen scraps, um, some wool scraps, different types of scraps, which is really cool because we never really had a node to gather scraps from. But unfortunately, that one's only gem store only. So there are some stuff you can buy from the gem store as well that are nodes. Uh, no way to get those. I don't know if they're available right now or how many there are. But I know there's quite a few of them that do require you to buy it from gem store only let's see if we type in node here oh here we go we have the basic ore node the basic harvesting node and the basic lumber node the leather node i guess isn't on sale right now or well if you type in leather rack i'm pretty sure it pops up that's because node's not in the name but yeah that's pretty much the home instance uh some other things i really want to talk about is i wish they would actually implement the home instance a bit more if you recall, and maybe some of you don't remember this, and I actually found this out a while ago. Back when Guild Wars 2 was in its alpha version, very early on, they used to have a vendor in here that would actually identify dyes for you. So usually, like right now, you can just double click a die and it'll identify it for you. And it'll be like, hey, you have this die, here it's in your collection. If not, then you basically can't add it to your collection. But there used to be a little mechanic where you would go to your home instance and every day, there will be an NPC here that would identify a die for you and it will be added to your collection. Like that was really cool. There was, a, there was a reason for us to go to our home instance and actually go every day and, you know, just come here and identify a die. That was cool. Uh, it sucks they don't they don't have a lot of these things here anymore. I wish they would add an NPC with you know some, some kind of daily mechanic. I mean we have the daily nodes, which is really cool, and I appreciate that. You know, I'm I'm actually pretty happy that I got a lot of these nodes in my home instance. Because I had like zero. Like a week or two ago I had zero. So uh, I only had the tree up there. I only had the, the Christmas tree up there. And I just got a lot of these recently and it's it's, it's just really cool. So if you don't have a lot of nodes, if you don't have anything in your home instance, I definitely recommend you to get some of these because it'll make it's it's worth your while. You get some free materials, you get free stuff, and if you're feeling generous, you can even uh, you know put an LFG up and show some of the newer players that there's some pretty cool stuff you can get in the home instance. Uh, Reanet really hasn't done much of the home instance other than adding new nodes. I mean, there are some changes you can make to your home instance, like you know with the personal story. There are some connections with the personal story. One of the classic examples is the human home instance where you decide to save the orphans or the hospital. And then one of these places shows up in your home instance. So there is you know, small minor changes you can see, but nothing really too crazy that really affects players in, you know, in the future. A lot of us who have played the game for a long time are level 80 now and 
or doing a Heart of Thorns Masteries, we're not, we don't really look for that orphan or that hospital or, you know, any of these minor changes. There are some cool little NPCs. I don't think many of you even noticed that when you created your character, depending on what type of personality you picked, there's actually a NPC in your home instance that basically represents your personality. As you pick, as you see, I picked uh, this personality trait, and there's actually an NPC here that reflects that. So there's some pretty cool, neat things. I know that there's a Belcher's Bluff NPC that sometimes comes here as well. I don't know exactly how to activate him. And there's other NPCs that come into your home instance depending on if you completed certain missions, like a Retribution or Order of the Whispers. As you see here, I joined Order of the Whispers, so I have some of the Order of the Whispers agents Fight. in my home instance, which is pretty cool. But I still feel like there could be a lot more added to this, and it'll be really cool, especially since we don't have an option to decorate our home instance, which I'm still waiting for. I'm still waiting for housing decorations. Come on, Arena Net, we want that. We want housing decorations. Uh, we have it for Guild. It can't be that hard to implement. <laughs> So it'd be cool if they added some more stuff for our home instance, you know. But um, yeah, that's all I really want to talk to. That's all I really wanted to talk today about. Um, and hopefully you guys got some insight on this. And if you want to get your own nodes, hopefully this little guide here showed you how to get them. If you want to see the full list of of uh things you can buy, I'm actually gonna go head out to Radisum real quick to show you the full list. Like I just showed you, some of these you have to buy from the vendors. If you just go to Heart of Thorns maps, there's a little icon on uh, where, where the vendors are. Usually near the entrance of the map, there's always a vendor, and he sells it to you. So I'm not gonna go over there and because it'll take way too long to go to all the maps. But I will show you the, I will show you the uh, Laurel vendor because it's right outside here. There's a, there's, also, there's also a lot of other season one rewards you can buy with laurels and with gold that you may be interested in. Uh, to me, I didn't really find any of them as worth a while as the uh, home nodes were because I have laurels to spare I have like over t I had over 200 laurels and I had like over 200 gold also and I did know I did know a couple of people wanted me to do a video on home instance and how to get the nodes so here it is you guys asked for it and here it is here's laurel vendor and if you go down to living world season one rewards which is right here here's where your nodes would be I already bought them so they're not in the list but here you would find them. There's several you can buy. There's all those several other stuff like minis and uh, uh, endless tonics here you can buy as well. Some pretty cool stuff. I really haven't looked into it too much. But uh, yeah, that's where you get them from. And some of them are achievement based, like I said. So that's pretty much it. Any questions or comments, leave down in the comment section below. And hopefully you enjoyed the video. We'll be, getting, we'll be coming out with more Guild Wars 2 content in the future. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. Plenty of Guild Wars 2 content on the channel. Plenty more to come as well. That'll be it. Thank you for watching, as always. And this is GS Matter Smart. I'll be back sooner than you think. Don't go anywhere.